So they go in there to check it out. There's this huge opening, it's massive, like crevice. And they're looking around and they see somebody crawling out of it. And they go around and they find out, they go down there and they find out it's Shigeru. And they, they talk to him like, dude, what are, you, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. You got stuck underneath the mine. You know, stuck in the mine. And uh, he's, you know, he's in shock. He doesn't know anything. Like, he doesn't remember anybody. He doesn't say anything. He just sits there. He may make a facial expression or two, but he's pretty much, he's gone. So they bring him back, let his girlfriend talk to him, whatever. Then nothing. He doesn't do anything. You know, they don't know what's going on. Uh, they start hearing reports of, but they start getting reports in of, of like, cows missing and horse livestock disappearing. And then it cuts over to a, a scene of a jet, like, you know, like, a jet was, you know, scanning, you know, just doing a local, fly, you know, mission. Uh, and the pilot's like, well, I, I have something on radar that's not, I don't know what this is. And like it's huge, but we, you know, we don't know it's unidentified. He's like, well, "We'll go check it out." You know, the, the command tower, or whatever, tells him, "We'll go check it out." And he starts to get, you know, he tries to move along, and it's it's massive. And he's pushing yet as fast as it'll go, and he still cannot catch whatever this is. But it double back, you know, it turns around, and it it bam, it takes out his jet. So they lose communication. There's a jet gone. Then they get reports of airliners disappearing. Now things are getting a bit complicated. They, they, they understand that the Megan Newland, they're pretty much, those are pushed aside. They're like, all right, that's been, that's been, you know, done. We, you know, we imagine there's no more. Push it aside. If they can't, that's never brought up again. And then a newlywed couple disappears. And the only thing they find are their shoe, a shoe and a camera. So they're getting the camera while, well, you know, it's just cuts to the, these police officers. Like, they're getting the camera developed. Like, well, it's not, it doesn't, they're like, no, it's not a suicide. There's no way. They were too happy. They don't seem like the type. Which, of course, this is a little different nowadays, but back then. But, you know, they, were, they just got married. They're on their honeymoon. They're taking pictures. Well, they're going through the pictures, and they find all these happy pictures of them together, you know, holding hands and stuff. But then they get this one shot of, like, a wing, and it like, almost looks like part of a wing and a foot. So they take it to a scientist, and he's like, well, this is weird, you know, this isn't, this looks like a, you know, a pteranodon or some type of flying reptile. Scientists are trying to decipher, you know, the photographs and figure out what this creature is. We go over to Shigeru in our small room recovering with his, you know, significant other. And, you know, they're just hanging out, you know, my, you know he's not really doing nothing because, you know, he can't really do much right now. But she's like, oh, look, the birdies. You know, because they have a small bird cage in there, the room. And like, oh, look, the eggs are hatching. Tee! And she shows them. And he like sees it, and like right when he sees the egg crack, it's just like flashback time, and we go back to find out, you know, what happened after the, you know, what happened after he got stuck by the cave, and, and you know, we see him witness the birth of Rodan from this huge enormous egg, and you know that causes him to, you know, severe trauma and all that jazz, but he gets his memory back. And he tells everybody, like, you have to understand, this is what I've seen. It's, it's, it's like a pteranodon, but it's fucking huge. It's ginormous. And, you know, after that, 
they start getting sightings of, of strange objects all around the world, like all over the place. And eventually, a group, you know, a, it is sighted over a city or a small, uh, or they they see it emerge from a forest, and you know they're like, holy crap! And you know it, it you know wreaks a little havoc on them. And they start sending jets at like, we gotta get rid of this thing, because it generally seems to be located, I mean, it, its general location is around the mine, because that's where it was born at, but it'll go elsewhere. So they send jets after them, you know, to try to take it out, missiles, you know, nothing, doesn't do anything. Rodan just psh, takes them out. No, bam, no, no, no big deal, no nothing. Just and then you know, then they're like, you know, what do we do? And that's that's kind of where I want to leave it because like a lot happens that that really just escalates really quickly at that point. So yeah, for the for the characters, we're just to jump right into that. All the actors in this movie do a really good job. In fact, above average job for these types of films. And this generally typical Toho, the Toho. I don't know. I always thought I was rather fond of the Toho actors. They re, you know, they show up in a lot of different Toho films, which usually this general core group of actors. But they're really good. They do an amazing job with their parts. I'm reviewing the Japanese version with subtitles. Uh, while I'm not going to go into a big depth, the dub is pretty good for this. It's decent, but. I mean, all the actors are good, but one that really stands out is the fellow who played Shigeru. Uh, he, he, I mean, it wasn't that his regular acting or anything, I mean, it was good, it was good, but it was his physical acting, because when he went into that state of shock, he didn't say anything, it was all, you know, facial expressions and such, and he did a really, really good job, I think, I think, I mean, not, I'm not saying, you know, he could deserve some kind of huge reward for it, but for these types of movies, he did a really, really good job. And you know, I, I can't really say enough about it. You really just have to see him do this sort of thing, and he does a really, you know, convincing job. <laughs> Nothing really, again, nothing a whole lot to say about the characters. Nothing, I mean, they all really did their part and they did it well. And that's what matters. That's important. For the monsters, monsters, this is the important stuff. This is why we're here. Alright, you got the Megan Yulins, the, the, their worm, dragonfly fly larvae. Which technically, dragonfly larvae, nymphs, uh, are more uh, are more aquatic. We'll let them slide because they do technically kind of live in, in around the water. This is a prehistoric thing. We'll let them go. Everything's prehistoric in these movies. So it's supposed to be this prehistoric dragonfly larvae that's apparently been underground for about a bazillion years. But it's really cool how they did them. I mean, the designs are that great. It's like they rehashed one of the old Mothra suits. But, I mean, it's really cool how they build them up. I mean, the horror element with them in the beginning, and it makes it seem like those would be the monster for the film. They don't really have any special powers. They just got claws, and, you know, they attack people and eat them and such. I mean, the good, I mean, there's not really, like I said, there's, there's just not a lot to say about them. They're pretty basic, but they're cool that they're there, because they add a really neat element to the beginning of the film, and, you know, they're just this really neat tie, you know, it ties you over until Rodan. So it's not just like a bunch of BS and random stuff, and then Rodan shows up. Not saying that happens in Toho films, I'm just saying. But Megan Newell does make an appearance in another Godzilla film, or another Toho film. It's actually Godzilla versus Megagirus, Megagirus, whatever you want to call it. It was, it was one of the later, it was the Millennium movies, I believe it was made in 2001 or 2000. 
don't quote me on that. I'm not really going to go into it, but it made an appearance there as it's completely evolved Dragonfly form. But it was really cool that they reused it again, you know, an almost 50 year old monster at that time and just dug it out. Like, hey, let's do this more. You know, let's do this. And they should do that more or create new bad guys and not always rehash a bunch of them. But I digress. That will be covered on another movie.